I want to bring up Matt Faircloth. This guy is amazing. And his book, Raising Private Capital, I found it when Pace Morby was interviewing you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it, that he wrote the forward to it. And I know Pace Morby is just a guy out there and he's doing he's a some, machine. He's a machine yeah. in raising private capital and doing things creatively. Yeah, so I'm Matt Faircloth. The book's called Raising Private Capital, and it, it's a bit of the story of how Liz and I and, and our company, the DeRosa Group, ex expanded to work at about just 1,800, 1,900 units of multifamily and started at a portfolio in Trenton and through raising money out of our own network, built it up and over and over and over again. And, you know, I now sit on top of a company of just about a dozen and a half people that, you know, we, we are fully integrated. So we've run and managed multifamily all across the North Carolina, Kentucky, Pennsylvania. Used to be Trenton, no longer Trenton. Um, you know, <laughs> we sold our last Trenton property actually a couple of weeks ago. But some of those properties are in here as, exa as examples. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's the, the Liz and I could write a book called The Trenton Chronicles, and that is <laughs> all kinds of great stories uh, from the, the down uh, gave us in a flu uh, just a couple of gray hairs. Too. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of those stories are in that book as well. And the, the, just to underscore it, Eric, is that, and to you guys, the book's premise is that we all know people with money. Liz and I, we, we expanded beyond it, but our first couple of million in capital that we raised for equity for deals were all people that we knew. And I promise you, Liz and I are not like members of a country club or these, these aren't like uber wealthy people that we happen to hang out with. These are like, you know, my mom and dad, people that we know out of our own network, people that Liz went to school with and stuff like that. Those were our initial investors. So if you know where to look, there is millions of dollars in your cell phone. When I got interviewed by Pace Morby, he said that the book inspired him to start looking through his phone. He said, that guy's got a retirement account. That guy's, and he said he started scanning through his cell phone and he said he found like $5 million just by looking through people in his contacts. And so the point of the book is not about getting around the right people. It's about knowing the conversations to have with the people that we interact with every day and how to present what we do in real estate investing to just about everybody around us and how they can, they can all join us on our journey of building our portfolios. You talked about self-directed IRA money. Yes. Just talk a little about, again, I put so many notes here and, and I'm looking for some of the good questions that I put here, yeah. but that's one that I want to really talk about. What's my favorite source. It's yeah, my, well, it's my I, favorite and I place to get money. Yeah, that's why I mentioned. So talk yeah. about the SD. Sure. Self-directed IRA, right? And it sounds like something super fancy, but it is, it's so basic and benign. Everybody in this room could probably have one. And everyone in this room 100% knows somebody in their, in their cell phone right now that could, that could have a self-directed IRA. All a self-directed IRA is, is a former 401k. So if someone used to have a job working for company A, mm -hmm. they leave that job, they get laid off from that job, they retire from that job, whatever it is, that 401k is now automatically an IRA. Right? It's, a, it's a retirement account for a company you, didn't use, you, don't, you, didn't, you don't work for anymore. Right? That's an IRA. You can roll it over for a couple hundred bucks to a self-directed IRA custodian. Right? Any IRA, Roths, all those kinds of things can all get rolled over to, a, to an IRA custodian. And this isn't like the Vanguard, the Fidelis of the, Fidelis of the world. Those guys are going to put you in mutual funds in, you know, based off of Wall Street. But an IRA can be invested in many, many things outside of Wall Street. Right? You know, you know what percent of IRAs are invested outside of Wall Street? No clue. Somebody guess in the room. It's four. Four percent, right? And there are trillions with a capital T of dollars in IRA accounts in the U.S. Right? The number that I saw is that we can move that number by one percent. It moves like two hundred billion dollars into real estate investing or into anything. Right? An IRA can own bars of gold. An IRA can invest in private partnerships. That's what we do. An IRA can be a lender on real estate. It can do all kinds of lovely things outside of owning a mutual fund. Uh, you know, where half the profit goes to Vanguard. Right? So, and everybody here. Everybody here knows somebody who used to work at this company and now works at this company. Right. So, so what's the conversation you have with someone like that? You know, I, I've, I've done like mock just pitches with people and stuff like that. But in essence, it's just you congratulate them on leaving the job that they used to have. By the way, most people I've talked to like, oh, you know, they, they, we're at the level now, luckily, that at DeRosa Group, we get phone calls regularly from people that want to invest with us. And so my team will get on the phone with them and say, well, what do you want to, well, I've got, you know, 25K, 50K sitting in a CD in cash, and I want to put that to work. And we'll say, well, okay, great. We can put that to work for you. Tell us about your other assets. Well, this and that, what about your house? Well, my house, I paid that off five years ago. Okay, great. 
put them in a mental note because the three places we talk in raising private capital that, that money could get put to work in real estate investing is real estate equity, 30% of house, 30% of primary residences in America are free and clear, mm -hmm. right? 30%. That's all that, that could 100% be put to work into a real estate deal. Cash as well, and IRAs. And when we talk to these investors, we're like, well, yeah, the house is free and clear. Great, let's talk about that. Now, what about your retirement accounts? Oh, yeah, I have a retirement account, but that's, you know, that's with Vanguard. Sometimes they forget they have IRAs, you know, because you don't think about it. It's just sitting there, just floating, and they get a statement once a year. Yeah. Well, how much is in that? Well, that's got 250 grand in it, but I can't really do anything with that. And was, yes, you can. You can do that. So it's really, it's an education piece, Eric, in that like the conversation is 100% teaching those around us that there is another way besides Wall Street, that you can take your money and put it into other outlets, many, many other outlets besides Wall Street and build your wealth through real estate investing and maybe, you know, get involved in a fix and flip that you drive by on your way to work every day, you know, and your money's just more tangible, closer to you than it is not sure what it's doing in Wall Street. Let me ask you this. So you have the, the self-directed IRA, and that's an opportunity to guide people into your world, right? Yes. To say, like, look, there's another way to invest your money. Yeah. What's the next best way? I mean, what, what's, your, what's your next? Besides self-directed? Yeah, well, next, what's your next favorite source of cash? cash? Because I, my least favorite is, is real estate equity. Because real estate equity, the, the way you unlock that is with a home equity line of credit. Those used to be a lot cheaper than they are now. You know, and I mean, Liz and I have a HELOC on our home and we take that HELOC and put it into hard money loans. So, and that's, you know, if you guys have a home with a lot of equity in it, get a HELOC and for goodness sake, put that money to work. That money's just, it's dead money just sitting there not making you anything. You know, Liz and I make a thousand dollars a month on a HELOC that we have and do, and do a hard money loan with a friend of ours, you know? But my second favorite is cash. And the reason why cash is my favorite is because there are a lot of benefits that cash presents in equity. In the book, what I talk about, Eric, is I don't like have favorite vehicles. I have a vehicle that's my favorite for the, for the, the investment you're putting it into. So IRAs, my favorite thing to put those into are hard money loans. I have a, we have a debt fund that has a couple dozen hard money loans out there. My favorite thing to do with that, with, with IRAs, is hard money loans. I can get into why if you want. Cash, 100%, my favorite thing to do with that is to put it into real estate equity because of the tax benefits that people can get in putting a cash investment into a direct equity piece in real estate, like owning a long-term hold. So I wanna go back for a minute because you just said you take a home equity line of credit, yes, which is something that you could then say to Mary Jo and yes. say, hey, you have equity in your home, Yes. take the equity out, yeah. invest it with me, Yes. And then there's, they make profit on that. I'd rather see Mary Jo lend it to you because I don't like her putting equity in your deal because equity, so many of our, my investors misunderstand this. Equity is not guaranteed to make a monthly payment to you and to your investors. I like that as an investor. Right. Yeah, well, like I, well, honestly, you should like a private loan as well. As an, as, as an operator, I like private loans too because I get to keep all the upside, but I do have to make that monthly payment. Your lender also has to make a monthly payment, right? On their HELOC, they have to pay their bank on a monthly basis for that home equity line that they sure. have out there. So I don't like them taking 100 grand on a HELOC and putting it into equity in my, into one of my apartment building deals. We've told people no when, they've, when they said that's what they want to do. Because if my apartment building deal doesn't produce for a quarter, I, I'm not going to just pay them. You know, sure. uh, we're going to pay, we pay out of profit. You know, and so we, you, an equity investment is not guaranteed to pay a distribution. And you don't want to put something that has to make a monthly payment into, into something that may or may not make a distribution. What I like doing with, with, with HELOCs is 100% hard money loans because you get, you have collateral, yeah, you're taking, sorry to get all techie guys, but you take, you're putting collateral on your home, yeah. right? So you might as well invest it in this other thing over here that has collateral as well, right? right? So I'm, I'm putting a- Safe. Yeah, it's safe. And it also has a monthly payment. So if I'm making a monthly payment to my bank for $400 a month, and I can lend it to this person over here that's gonna pay me $1,300 a month, I can make that arbitrage in monthly payments. You know, And if they don't pay me, I have a lien on that property. And if I don't make my monthly payment, they get a lien on my property as well. So at least it's, I'm kind of transferring that collateral to the other property, if that mm. makes sense. It does. Yeah, so that's my favorite thing to do with home equity lines of credit. And when you say cash, yes. I, I know it sounds- Savings accounts. Say, yeah. Okay, so money's sitting in the bank. Money's sitting in the bank. 
Yeah. And if we're all blessed enough, we all got money sitting in the bank, right? <laughs> and so they're earning a whopping three, four. one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. It, it used to be like a half of a half of a percent. Right. Now and it's and like, it'll go back know. down a little bit when yeah, the sure. rates change. Sure will. Already has. So what are they doing with that money? They, what I suggest that they do is that they put that, and this could happen, it doesn't have to happen into one of Matt's apartment building deals. You know, we're buying a 36 unit right, you know, right now in Wisconsin, right? So it doesn't have to be an investment in that deal. It could be the investment in, like, I'm gonna pick on you. I always pick up the people sitting up front. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, uh, your duplex, right? So she's buying a duplex or something like that. Somebody could be an equity investment in that duplex and that whatever they have in cash. And there's no law that says that there's minimum investment or whatever it is. If they have 10K, they could invest 10K into your duplex deal. That's it. What's the difference between a joint venture and a partnership? Okay. Joint venture is where Eric and I do a joint venture. And this is where you do half the work, I do half the work, and I have some sort of like sweat contribution into the deal. A equity investment that needs to get filed with the SEC that's a real security is the only effort I do is to pick up a pen and write you a check. And then I go like this and expect you to give me returns and I expect you to do all the labor, all the work and everything like that. You just sold me a security. Right? And that is regulated by the SEC, and you do need to get a lawyer involved. It's not the end of the world. Lawyers are actually really good people, and they do good work and everything like that. They're a little expensive, but they keep us out of trouble, right? So you would need to get a lawyer involved in that arrangement where you're selling 100% passive equity to somebody. So you're saying that on the deals that I do, yeah, where I'm flipping a home, yeah, and I bring in three investors each giving me $25,000. Got it. I don't want to hear from them. Yeah, but did you, put, did you put a lien on the property with the 25K? Nope. Okay, next time you do that, put a lien on the property and it's not equity. When you say put a lien on the property, okay. meaning like, uh, like a note? Yeah, so investor A goes in position one, lender, not investors, they're lenders, right? So lender, the lender one goes in first position, lender two goes in second position, lender three goes in the third position. That's not equity. You didn't sell them equity, you, sold, you borrowed money from them. It's a different arrangement. The SEC does not regulate loans like that. Interesting. Someone's out there, they wanna buy a property, yeah. uh, whether it's a fix and flip or a, a duplex. Who, who do they go out and see? I mean, you say they're in their phone book. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so who are they looking for in their phone book? What's the, who, who would you advise the, the, the hottest lead in their phone is? Hmm. The, the person that like, I, in the book I talk about the clues that you look for, for somebody with cash looking to invest. And uh, you look for somebody like for, for, for real estate free and clear. Like I, I said, we, Liz and I started with debt borrowing money from people for fix and flips and also doing the burr strategy, which was much easier back in the day when rates were lower. But that's how we got started. That's how we built the hundred and some odd units in Trenton right. was by, before the cool kids were calling it the burr strategy, we right. just thought it was borrowing money from an investor and then refinance it with a bank, right? right? So we did that a lot. And we did a lot of that with people with retirement accounts through going around educating people around us on how the retirement account could get put to work in something else and borrowing them. I mean, I had one guy, I borrowed it, let's see, it started with 100K, 100K, and what's beautiful about IRAs is he'd borrow 100K from me. I'd do the project, I'd give him back 108, right? And then he would put 108 in my next deal, mm -hmm. and alone, and then I'd give him back 120. Then he'd get take 120 in my next deal, and before you knew it, this guy was running around with 160K in his retirement account. That 60K was all recycled interest that he had, I had paid him, and then he'd put back into my deal. So he was able to compound his retirement account, all tax deferred in his little retirement. He didn't pay a nickel of tax on any of that gain that he made. On the gain that you helped him make? Yes. How so? Because, I, because it's a retirement account, right? The IRAs, that's the beauty of IRAs, is because they're ta it's all tax deferred. This guy was 52, 53 years old at the time. And so he was ta just taking his retirement account, putting it to work in my deal, and I would pay him, like I said, eight grand in interest. You know, for, and, and I was able to negotiate that he also didn't, I didn't pay him any of the interest until the deal was done. I didn't make any monthly payments, I just paid. Mm. Because it's a retirement account, right? Now, if you're borrowing money from somebody with a, a line of credit, a, home, a HELOC, if that's their vehicle, you need to make the monthly payments so they can make their monthly payments. But with a retirement account, you don't necessarily need to make a monthly payment because what are they gonna do with it? 
if you're throwing it in their retirement account, you're almost making a problem, you know? So, so I would pay him the full eight grand, and then he would, he'd, have his eight, he'd have his initial seed capital back, mm -hmm. 100 grand. Then he'd have the eight grand I paid him in interest. Now he's sitting on 108. The eight grand's his profit, his interest on the deal. Now he can put all that back into my next project. And so he can compound and make interest on the interest that I was paying him. Wow. It exponentially grow. Did you get that? Uh, I didn't realize that, 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 that if somebody is, ta so that's the self-directed IRA? Yeah, it, it, it's right. And the, the, what's magic about it is they don't pay tax on those gains. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's all inside that little bubble of, 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 the, of the retirement account. Yeah, I have a friend in here, he's actually not here, I don't, maybe he's in the other room, but he's invested in three or four of our last deals. And he's like, you're gonna W9 or 1099 me? 1099. 1099 me. So we've been doing it that way, and I guess if he had it taken that money from a self-directed IRA, that's right, and then puts it back into the account. Yeah, you're gonna pay. You're gonna borrow the money from him. Then you're gonna pay him the interest and his principal back into his IRA. You know, it, the IRA is not gonna pay taxes because it's a tax-deferred vehicle, right? Like amazing. It's, it's, yeah, that's what's great about it. Wow. So he gets to save all that tax money. Yeah. He does. I'm sorry he's not here. Hopefully we're recording this. I know. He's That's gonna have good. to pay more taxes. So look, before we head off, what, what would be, if, if, if I'm speaking to somebody who, you talk about someone in here who comes into a bunch of money, right? Inheritance. Inheritance. How do I approach that with class? First, like I, I have put money to work for people that had insurance settlements that lost a family member and I help them put the money to work. And, I, and, and you can't show up like an ambulance chase and you know, cause you gotta show up like you wanna help and give them and like legitimately, you know, I, I approached it with, you know, condolences and love and like, you know, how can I help you? And this is in some way a blessing, but in another way, that's like a problem where you're like, oh geez, what am I gonna do with this? You know, it's, it's the same way that you would if you're buying a home directly from someone through an estate sale, right? You're not a vulture, you're trying to help them, right? Like, how can I help you solve this problem? Because as much as like it's a, it's a legacy hand down okay. to you, it's also in some ways, it's a bit of an albatross, right? So how can I help you solve this as quickly as I can and put this to work? And so what I look at it, when I, when I look at things like that, I say, okay, I can put this into a private loan with you. I can put it into a real estate equity. You can buy a piece of this apartment building deal. This is what those returns would look like. This is what the effort you would put forth would look like. And you know, I just present them with options because most people out there don't know that there's options outside of Wall Street for investing. That's wow. the bottom line. And it's up to us as capital raisers to be educators. And I know we're sure, I'm watching the clock here, running a little low on time. I wanna just point it out to you guys. That I hope you guys all check out my book. And I was going to say, you got to get this guy's book. It's well, amazing. For the realtors in the room, you're gonna, I'm going to give you a copy of it because you sat up front and I let you pick on me because I, I, I picked on you. So yeah, and raising, it's, raising private also. capital. It's called raising private capital. So so you win. And I got one more up here. But the the point is for my realtors in the room, right? The next time y'all come across a duplex or a triplex or this fix and flip deal that you're like, man, one of my investors is going to make a lot of money on this deal. How about this? How about you do that deal, right? Because all y'all know people with money that could, that are looking for a better way and you guys could buy the Screaming Hot deal before you go put it on the market and make a couple percent, right? How about you get in there and get in the game and do the deal yourself? Because as much as you think, oh, my investors got money or whatever it is, they're calling, they're doing the same thing I'm doing, man. They're calling somebody with an IRA, with an IRA retirement account and everything like that. And you guys have a Rolodex too. Right? So to all my realtor friends here, I'm not telling you to stop being realtors and start being full-time investors, but you could also do really great deals that come by your, your plate by using the technology that's in this book. The end. That's amazing. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. And, and Matt and his better half are gonna be over there. Don't everyone leave, but there's gonna be enough room in there talking about investing with your spouse. So thank you, brother. Check out his book, Raising Private Capital.